Hi everyone, it's James here from TSR Javi Talks Tech. So this is part, I've lost track of how many, of the great Dolby Atmos installation build video series thing. Um, in the last part, we put up the speakers and they're in place and they're wired in and they're lovely. However, we now need to get some signal to them, which is really important. Now for my controller, my Atmos controller, my monitor controller if you like, I'm using this baby. This is the new Audient Aurea, a dedicated Atmos and immersive ready, either audio interface, USB audio interface, or it can just be your monitor controller. Now at the moment, I'm a little bit up in the air how exactly I'm gonna use it. So I'm thinking for when I'm mixing, in Atmos, I shall be using the Aurea as my main audio interface, my main output device, connected via USB into the MacBook Pro. Then when I'm using the console in a kind of band multi-track recording situation, I'm gonna use the Goliath via the HDX cards and have those feed into a stereo pair, in fact, an ADAP pair of the Audient. So, it's a little bit hybrid, a little bit up in the air at the minute, exactly what I'm gonna do. But I'm very excited to get this bit done. This is the kind of the speaker calibration, the room calibration, if you like. And Audient, very smartly, have teamed up with Sonoworks. So you can take a Sonoworks calibration and apply it to your Audient immersive environment. So let's get on and do the calibration, shall we? Now, for any of you who've watched the Universal Audio video I did recently uh, about their calibration system, it's pretty much the same. There are a few variations, obviously because we've got a lot more speakers in this particular rig, but the process is the same. We use the measurement microphone to measure the room, I mean, physically measure it, and then we do a sonic kind of uh, test, if you like, and those EQ curves get applied to each of the individual speakers, which is really, really clever. So, let's crack on, shall we? Before we start, let's have a quick look at the Aurea itself. It's a nice one new rack in matte black. Because Aurea is also an audio interface, we do get two mic pre's. Now, I am very fond of audience mic pre's. I can't guess how you'd come to that conclusion. We can control these from the front panel, which again is great. We have our main kind of master volume, we can change the profile. We can also click in the down mixer if we want to, and we have a function button. We then have two independent headphone outputs. Around the back, which I won't show you for very obvious reasons, are the main I.O. There is an optional Dante card, which quite frankly, I wish I'd taken, but that's extra dough. Uh, word clock connectivity, which is really handy when we are looking at using digital connections, which I am. We have a 25 pin D sub output for AES, which is a way to connect to digital speakers, which is really handy. Eight channels of ADAT optical light pipe IO, which is what I'm using to get signals from my other interface into Aurea. The speaker outputs are over balanced TRS jack. I understand why they've done this purely as a real estate, uh, back panel real estate issue, but I don't like TRS jacks as much as I like XLRs. That's just a thing. We then have two dedicated stereo outputs for extra sets of speakers if you want. The other really cool feature of Aurea is its control panel. Audience um, software integration is always excellent. I'm always really happy with it. We have a software mixer, which allows us to view exactly what's going on, which is really cool. I can take the mic pre's out of there. The opticals, just look at the DAW outputs if I want to, really, really handy. We also have a metering window, which means you haven't got to be able to see the full app just the meters if you want to, which again, really handy. If I go into setup, you can see exactly what's going on with each of my speakers, which is really nice. Now you can see here, this is the full 9.1.6 setup. I'm not using all the sides and all the height speaker channels. I don't need them. I don't have that facility in this space, but you can get in and interrogate exactly what's going on. We have a trim, we have a delay and a crossover for the bass management for each speaker output, which is really handy. I'm not using that at the moment because I've got full range speakers. We've got control of our LFE or our sub, our heights, 
it's a really, really simple thing to use. I can solo or mute different elements of the rig if I want to. Really easy to use. I love it. All the functionality that's available on the Aurea Mac or PC app is also available on the iPad, which is really, really handy. I can get in, I've got my main kind of home page. I can get in and see which profiles I'm using. I can mute different speakers in the configuration. I can see what's going on. I've got a volume control, which is really handy. Mute, dim, all the normal stuff I'd expect. I can mute my heights. I can solo my sides. I've got the metering. I can pull in more profiles and change profiles if I wish. This is how I connect to the Aurea via the Wi-Fi. Some settings. It's just a really, really handy place to be and get loads done. And of course, most of us have a tablet or an iPad already. So one, there's no need to have your Aurea within easy reach. And two, there's no need to go out and buy an extra controller. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the Aurea software, the control panel, so we can see what's going on with our speaker rig. And we're then going to get on and open up Sonarworks, which I think is there. So here's the sound ID reference, and I'm going to use a new preset, and I'm going to create a new speed calibration profile. Right, let's get started. We can choose anything from stereo all the way up to 916. This is a Dolby Atmos 714 rig. And there's my arrangement of speakers. My seven at ear height, my LFE or my sub, and my four height speakers. Next. All of this is okay. I've done that, I'm very thorough. Now this time we're using the Audient Aurea as our interface. We're going to put that into measurement mode. And now we're going to crack on with the measurements. So, tippity tap tap tap. I hate tapping microphones, but hey, that's what they tell you to do. I've already put the right serial number in. We are going to work with the curve that they have applied. Yes, I want to do the Dolby curve thing, but more bottom end. Now we can test each speaker. There's the sub. They're all working, which is great. Now, because we have so many speakers, obviously there's a certain amount of testing per speaker this is going to take a while. So at moments, you'll see me speed up and slow down and mainly speed up, but um, you'll get the idea, I hope. Okay. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Left speaker. Right speaker. It does. Here we go. My mic's already in the sweet spot because that's roughly where I'm gonna sit, roughly the right sort of height, maybe a little bit lower perhaps. Roughly in line with the, there we go, roughly in line with the tweeters. It's an omnidirectional microphone, so we haven't got to point it in a particular direction, but I am following best practice, which is stated on the video, so the microphone's pointing straight up. Here we go. Okay, next. Yep, we're in England, therefore we're gonna go metric. We'll pop the mic off the stand and we'll do the wavy wand bit. Here we go. Stay where you are. 
Measurements in progress. Left speaker done. Okay, next. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. Okay. Review dimensions. So it thinks 106. I can tell you now it's 125, but I do have my trusty tape measure. It's 125. So we'll adjust that manually. There we go, and next, we're now back in our sweet spot. Let's put it bang in the middle, as close as we can, and start. And again, let's review those. 105, again, I can tell you it's 125, because it just is. We worked very hard to make sure these are all equidistant and we have the perfect equilateral triangle to the listening spot. Let's pull that back a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. Start. Okay, start. Right, measurements complete. Right, now we have to do the room measurement bit. Now this bit takes time. It's what I refer to as the dance of the tripod and you'll see why shortly. All right. Uh, see you in 38 times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 14. <sighs>
Okay, so it's done its magic. And there are our responses, of which we have a great many. Purple is obviously the sub. Save and finish. So let's call it 714. We'll save that. So now we export preset to device. We're going to send it to our Aurea transfer to Audio and Aurea application. Yes, it's doing the magic. Ah. Create a new profile. Yep, save profile. Done. Disabled there, enabled there. So now, if we go into setup, we can now see each of the curves that has been applied. Along with the appropriate delay and crossover point for the base management. Nice, very nice work. And now, just to get really Larry, we can open iTunes and let's have a listen to something that I know works particularly well. So we now have Signal coming through our lovely 7.1.4 system. Thanks to Cali Audio for that one. We have it calibrated thanks to the Audient integration between the Aurea and the Sonoworks software. Great work there. And I can control it all from my trusty iPad. I can put the iPad next to me and I'm ready to go, which is great. So in the next video, we're gonna look at how we get Pro Tools or your DAW of choice to talk to our Aurea controller so we can then start working and mixing in a Dolby Atmos environment with our 7.1.4 immersive rig. But until next time, please do remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Also, if you are in the market for any of these goodies, please do check out the affiliate link down there with our friends at Toman. All this stuff is available from them. But for now, my name's James Ivey from TSR Jovi Talks Tech, and I'll see you again very soon.